Hello, welcome to BioFree. Uh, today we'll continue our lecture on evolution. Specifically, we'll talk about uh, microevolution and macroevolution. We will um, define uh, each term and also we'll give you examples and details about um, each uh, subtype of evolution. So the definition of microevolution is here. It has a lot. It has something to do with the genetic changes in the population. So um, what happened is that um, all evolution takes place in population. So no matter it is a microevolution or macroevolution, uh, it is the changes in the population. Why? Because if it is individual changes um, the trait or the change in the in the trait or the uh, the characteristic of the uh, animal it will not pass down to the next generation but the reason is that if the rest of the population do not have that trait then um, that specific trait for the individual will probably be lost in the uh, population gene pool or other the population gene will just uh, cover up this uh, special trait so it has the evolution changes has to take place in population and microevolution um, has a lot to do with the genetic changes that we observe in the population and the genetic changes um, must be able to pass down from generation to the next generation. It, it is inheritable. Um, so the fast reproducing species, um, for example, bacteria and insects, they are very fast in, in terms of uh, reproduction so that we can observe the changes from generation to generation. Whereas human being, it takes us, well, uh, many years in order to see the evolution changes because human lifespan is relatively longer than insects and bacteria. For macroevolution, um, the key term is that um, it is the, the process or the changes that can give rise to new species. So new species uh, arise because of the uh, changes in the uh, trait in, in, due to macroevolution. We can see these changes from fossil records. So let's take a look at microevolution first. Microevolution has uh, several famous um, examples. For example, this one, insect pesticides uh, resistant to pesticides. Um, what is the issue of uh, using pesticide? In, in farmland, in agriculture. The issue is like is this one. Okay, let's say the farmers, okay, they are growing crops and then they discover there are uh, insects or bugs, you know, eating their crops, what do they do? If they are uneducated or, or if they are not informed, if they are not informed, then what will happen? Um, they will use pesticide. So when, when the people use pesticides, yes, it kills uh, most of the insects or pests that, uh, that uh, eat their crops, but there will be one or two insects or pests that they uh, somehow they survive. If they survive the pesticide, then they will develop the resistance to the pesticide. Then what happened? What happened is that those survivor they will not have competition from other insects because the rest of the insects or pests they are all dead they are all killed by the pesticides so they will have no competition not only that they have large amount of food available for them this is the second point the third point is that they are resistant to pesticides so nothing can kill them so you have three reasons one no competition Two, availability of a lot of food. Three, 
pesticide cannot kill them. So what will happen next? What will happen is that farmers you will observe an overgrowing of a large population of insects that are pesticide resistant. They'll just keep eating the crops, nothing can kill them, they're very happy, no competition so they can breed and reproduce quickly. So the, the issue is that the second generation after using pesticides and when the farmers see uh, there's a growing of pests, it will be worse than the previous. So that's the reason um, uh, it, is, um, it is not encouraged, it is not encouraging for, uh, for farmers to use pesticides. And then the second example is bacteria or antibiotic resistance bacteria. Many of us have heard about this. Anti uh, there are a lot of uh, bacteria, they are resistant to antibiotics. Why? So, um, we can look at this. The, this one here. This one here. Originally, we have, let's say, a population or a colony of uh, 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 bacteria. Then we apply antibiotics. Antibiotics take is like pesticide. You kill most of the bacteria. But some bacteria they may live, some bacteria they may live and survive the they may live and survive the uh, antibiotics. So what happened? After that, then the one or two bacteria that survive the antibiotic they will grow. Because again there's no competition from other bacteria and the amount of resources or the food uh, is available for them only. It's like they have abundant supply of uh, resources and most importantly they are resistant to, uh, to antibiotics so no antibiotic can kill them. Then the, uh, then the new population of bacteria that uh, grow, uh, grow subsequently will be, uh, will be very strong. Yeah. So that's why when you have a, let's say, strepro infection or other kind of uh, infection, when the doctor prescribes antibiotics to you, please finish all the antibiotics as instructed and try and also try to stick to the schedule. So if the doctor tells you that, okay, you have to take antibiotics, let's say, three times a day or four times a day, please do it, um, please stick to it. And uh, uh, you have to follow the schedule every day and you have to finish all the antibiotics to make sure that you kill off all the bacteria. Yeah, so, um, so that you, you will not produce anti uh, an, uh, antibiotic resistance bacteria. And I have heard that nowadays uh, um, the situation in America is getting worse and worse. More and more bacteria they become uh, antibiotic resistance because people do not follow doctor's order. Um, either I would say either or both, uh, they do not follow doctor's order to take their antibiotics every day, uh, three or four times a day, or they do not finish the antibiotics. And one more thing is that uh, after you finish uh, the antibiotics, uh, uh, try to eat some yogurt. Eating yogurt is good for you because uh, the bacteria in yogurt is uh, some we we so called call them. Um, good bacteria. It is good for your intestine. So after you finish taking antibiotics, try to take some yogurt to uh, uh, um, um, recolonize your body with some good bacteria. Oh, the, 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 bacteria in the, the bacteria in the yogurt, they will live in your intestine and they help you to uh, um, uh, so-called to help you to be resistant, not resistant. Well, it helps your diarrhea. Basically, it helps your diarrhea. Yeah. So you can see that um, there are two petri dish. So each white dot, uh, each white dot, they have uh, antibiotics. Okay. And then after a while, you can see that some 
uh, three colonies. This colonies here, this colonies here, and this colonies here. Three colonies, they are antibiotic resistant. So it is getting worse and worse. So please um, uh, follow doctor's order to finish your antibiotics and to take it like three times or four times a Sorry, oh, okay, so please follow the doctor's order. Um, also, if you only have um, regular flu or cold, do not demand doctor to give you uh, antibiotics, okay? If it is a regular sore throat due to a viral infection, please do not demand, please do not ask your doctor to give you antibiotics. Viral infection, viral inf um, the, the sore throat caused by viral infection um, does not cure or does not cure by antibiotics. Another example of microevolution we call artificial selection. Artificial selection is um, I, I when I teach about biology I usually just give people the example of dogs. The reason is that um, um, Dogs breeder, they are famous for artificial selection. Why? They breed dogs according to so-called customer's preference. That means our preference. So we think that, oh, okay, dogs with short legs and um, um, uh, 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 short legs, they are cute. Let's say we customer believe that dogs with short legs are cute. So what happened? Then the dog's breeder, they will uh, breed the dog and then they will select, okay, the baby pup that has short legs, then they will keep them alive, and then baby dogs that uh, have uh, long legs, then they will, well, uh, sorry to tell you the truth, they will just kill them all. And then only the baby dog with short legs will, will alive, then after this, then when the baby dog become um, adult and they are and they also uh, reproduce or start to breed and they will continue continue to select the baby dog with short legs when baby dogs have short legs uh, again they do the same thing uh, they only keep the sh a short uh, short leg baby dogs alive the long leg baby dog they will all kill them so they do it for uh, several generations and guess what the artificial selection is actually f a lot faster than the natural selection. Uh, you can see the changes in the population uh, uh, in the in the trait uh, relatively quicker. It's like uh, two or three generation, and you already see that all the dogs have the short legs. That's the so-called. Um, one of the characteristic of artificial selection. Artificial selection is a lot faster than natural selection. And um, if you if you Google it on the internet about, uh, let's say, German Shepherd. German Shepherd in the past and German Shepherd nowadays, they look very different. German Shepherd in the past, they have long, thin legs. German Shepherd nowadays, they have uh, relatively shorter legs and uh, also German Shepherd nowadays they have a really large head and big uh, big, uh, big eyes but German Shepherd in the past they have a relatively smaller head and relatively smaller eyes. Why? They are Shepherd dogs that's why they need to run around really fast to um, to, to, um, to so called chase the sheep um, but because we customers think that, okay, dogs look cute with a larger head, bigger eyes, and most importantly, shorter legs. So the dog breeder, you know, um, breed the dogs according to our preference. Whatever we like, they will do it for us. So um, that's why nowadays the German Shepherd, they look very different from the German Shepherds uh, in the past. Okay, also plant cultivation, yes. Um, farmers, okay, they grow plants because they want to make money. Well, like every, like we work, 
in our uh, uh, job because we want to make money from our job. Similarly, farmers, their job is to grow plant, grow produce, you know, so that they can sell their produce and make money. So um, what happened is that corn, okay, originally look, looks like the, the left-hand side like this. But they, um, well, of course, there's in plant and, and crops, there are, there are lots of genetic engineering. It is a lot easier to genetic engineer plant or crops than in, let's say, animals or mammals. And, and also, they will choose the trait, meaning that a bigger kernel, bigger kernel, bigger, bigger and more kernels. And then um, this is the one that we prefer. This is the one that we prefer. And also wheat, okay. Originally the wheat, they are this thin and skinny. But uh, of course, we can use uh, artificial selection or genetic engineer to grow the wheat that is like this with a fuller uh, 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 wheat. So we talk about um, 